Hello, welcome back to the channel. The time and place tag has been making its way around BookTube here as of late, and I was thoughtfully tagged by the Mild Rumpus. There is a link to his video down below. The tag was created by Carl over at Please Read Your Book. There is a link to his original video down below as well. And the tag comprises five prompts to subjectively match a book with a time and or a place. Let's get into it. I am 38 years old. My wife and I live in Jacksonville, Florida now, but I grew up in Indiana in the 90s. Kurt Vonnegut has always reminded me of Indiana, not least because he was a Hoosier himself. There's even a Kurt Vonnegut Memorial Museum and Library located in Indianapolis, a place you should definitely visit if you ever find yourself in Indy for some reason. God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater is a book whose plot deals with a fictional Indiana County, but it is frankly not one of my favorites from Vonnegut. It's a little meandering and for me, not quite as memorable as a lot of his other work. So instead, I am going to go with Vonnegut's 1962 novel, Mother Night. In my youth, I spent quite a bit of time people pleasing and being disingenuous in a misguided attempt to get everyone to like me. I was a piece of shit, though. This book asks the question, are you what you pretend to be? While it does take place during World War II, an era I thankfully did not have to experience personally, its themes are timeless and it helped me to learn to live more authentically and to be very careful about what I pretend to be. My family on my father's side is originally from Norway. And for that reason, I have always wanted to visit the country where my great grandfather came from. But recently a DNA test taken by my brother revealed that we're actually more Scottish than anything. So since all my Karlova Kanausgard is still in storage, I'm going to have to go with Raw Spirit by Ian Banks. It's a non-fiction travelogue published in 2003, documenting a series of Banks' road trips through Scotland in search of the perfect glass of whiskey. There's Banksy himself right there. I do love a good glass of scotch. Speaking of which. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, this one is probably going to catch me a bit of flack, but hear me out. One Billion Years to the End of the World by the Strugatsky Brothers, their 1977 novel. It takes place in what was at the time Leningrad, what is now St. Petersburg, the second largest city in Russia. Let me finish. In my undergraduate studies, as someone who was aiming to work in the space industry, I was advised to take classes to familiarize myself with either the Chinese or the Russian language, since they are two of the major players in the space industry. I chose Russian, frankly, because I thought it would be at least marginally easier to learn than Chinese. But in the process, I sort of fell in love with the language and the people and the culture. The present political climate aside, it's a country with a rich cultural heritage, specifically in the arts. The Russian people have shown remarkable resilience in the face of considerable challenges 
throughout history, and they have been pioneers in several areas of science, mathematics, and technology. I do hope that everything can get sorted out peaceably sooner rather than later because it is a, another place that I would eventually love to visit. I don't own any books that take place entirely in Jacksonville that I know of. There are only two books in my personal library that even have scenes that take place in Jacksonville. One of them is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. In the final interlude between chapters 12 and 13, Lara Moon, the back from the dead wife of the book's central protagonist, Shadow, responds to a help wanted sign in a gas station in Jacksonville at two in the morning. The scene's not even a whole page long. The other one is Their Eyes Were Watching God, the 1937 Harlem Renaissance classic by Zora Neale Hurston. In chapter 13, Janie, the book's protagonist, runs away to Jacksonville to marry Tea Cake. This is a book about gender roles and the black American experience at the turn of the 20th century. It's got some terribly bleak moments, but it is widely hailed as a classic for a reason. Okay, so for this one, I have three different answers, a super optimistic answer, a middle of the road, safe-ish answer, and an incredibly pessimistic answer. For the optimistic one, I knew I wanted to choose a culture novel, so I went with Look to Windward, the 2000 pseudo-sequel to Consider Phlebas, the first book in the culture series. I've talked about Banks quite a bit on this channel already. He's one of my all-time favorites, and the culture novels comprise one of my all-time favorite series. The culture is a post-scarcity utopian society run by very powerful sentient machines called minds that allow humans to just do whatever it is they want to do that is most fulfilling for them. Do I think that this is or will be realistic? Not really, no, but a fella can hope, right? So my middle of the road safe answer is Artemis, Andy Weir's 2017 sophomore effort. While I do have some misgivings about Weir's portrayal of his central female protagonist, Jazz, I think he more or less nails the depiction of lunar tourism. The best thing about the book is definitely its phenomenally realistic view into what the future of space tourism could look like in just a few decades. It's a fun romp, but it is without a doubt the black sheep of the family that is Weir's output thus far. Finally, my pessimistic answer is Cormac McCarthy's 2006 post-apocalyptic tragedy, The Road. This book follows a father and son as they trek across an ash-covered American wasteland that is heavily hinted to have been ravaged by nuclear war, though the actual cause of the apocalypse is never truly specified. This is an incredibly bleak and haunting book made bearable only by McCarthy's signature beautiful prose. There's desolation, violence, cannibalism, and no shortage of potentially triggering content. It's a future that unfortunately seems more and more realistic with each passing day. But I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. And that's it. That's the tag. 
Thanks again to The Mild Rumpus for tagging me and to Carl for creating the tag in the first place. And I am tagging Reading Ideas, Sleepy Book Reader, Angela's Bookcase, Catherine Bailey, and Chris's Reading Corner. But no pressure at all. Have you read any of these books? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I upload a new video every single week. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, das Vidania.